All right, we're here at my outdoor worm bin, and what we have here is just a bunch of castings we just harvested. In fact, this is four pounds of castings. And the way I do that is I take my one of my Vermi Hut trays, and I just put the material in here and then shake it around, and there you go. Out comes these castings. Now those holes are about one quarter inch, so there are some cocoons in here, but that's okay, because I'm gonna put them in storage, and then they'll end up hatching in storage, and then I can bait them out. And right here is about 200 worms that we're gonna throw on top when we are finished so that we can do a time lapse. So let's go ahead and pull this off and get to our bin. All right, so what you're seeing on top here is kind of all the stuff that didn't make it through that holes. So the bin does not typically look like it's mostly this big material and stuff. So let's go ahead and kind of push this to the side and let's dig down in the middle because last time we were in here, we put in some fun stuff. We put in a pumpkin stem with the top from our jack-o'-lantern from Halloween, and then we also put in a whole celery stalk, along with some lettuce stalks and a banana peel, apple core, and a little bit of onion. I wanna see how they did in here because we are trying to build the population back up in this bin after giving away some to a neighbor. So let's go ahead and dig in here, and I'm starting to feel something right away, and I think, this is the pumpkin stem. Now it was attached to a pretty big piece of pumpkin. So I'm gonna go underneath and try and see how much of that is intact. And oh, looks like they took it totally off and ate all the pumpkin that was down there. So I see one worm right there kind of making its way around it. This feels pretty hard all around. Maybe a little bit mushy right here in the top, but there are just a ton of worms where that pumpkin used to be right there. I'm liking this. Population is definitely getting back up. So let's go ahead and see if there's any more of that feeding in here. And I know we put a lot of bedding. We put some of our old bedding in there. And sure enough, the worms are all throughout that, probably from the juices of all the food dripping down into that old bedding down below. You know what I'm not seeing is that celery stock. We thought that that would probably go pretty quickly, and sure enough, there is like no signs of it, and it was pretty huge. Let's go ahead and dig over here. This is magnolia fruit from a magnolia tree that was planted too close to our house and we eventually had to take down. This is gonna be in here for a long time. All right, yeah, all that food's gone, and it's only been 11 days, so I'm glad I jumped in here because we are gonna give them a pretty massive feeding. So let's go ahead and dig around the whole bin. Looks like this is maybe a piece of onion skin and that's gonna take a little bit longer. It stays pretty dry. But we are looking like we are back to our old bin where we had just lots of worms. So I am very excited about this. All right, let me dig around and see if I see any other kinds of surprising things in here. And then we'll form a hole for our feeding zone. All right, so I formed a pretty big hole because I'm gonna put a lot of bedding in here. As you can see, even though we took out four pounds of castings, there's still a lot of castings in here. So I wanna up the carbon level and I'm gonna put um, the star of the show right here, the pumpkin stem in the middle after I kind of line it with some bedding. So we started to collect a lot of these cardboard rolls here. So I'm going to put them in there, put another one in there. Here's a paper towel roll put in there like that. And then this one, I'm not sure where it came from, wrapping paper or something, but it is, it is hard as a rock. So this one is gonna be really interesting to see how they do with that. Obviously it's gonna have to absorb a lot of moisture before they can get to it. And then of course, we're gonna put a lot of shredded cardboard in as well. I think at the end, we'll put some of that on top too. So we'll make go ahead and shove that down. And then we're gonna put our pumpkin stem our magnolia fruit, and this looks like an avocado pit, which is a little mushy, but I don't wanna hit the executive producer in the eye if I squeeze it and flop it out of here. So my awesome mom saves her food scraps as well. So she gave us some lettuce and pineapple, and I've been using the bags to put some of our food scraps in here. So we're gonna add whatever's in here, and it, it is a lot, as well as a piece of watermelon. All right, so in we go. Let's see what we've got here besides the pineapple. Looks like a bunch of pumpkin, I'm sorry, looks like a bunch of banana peels. I got pumpkin on the mind, some strawberry tops. Here's some of that pineapple, so that's good. So that was some of the slow food, and this I think is gonna be more of the fast food. And sure enough, look at that, a huge lettuce stalk. 
some more tinier lettuce stalks, some tomatoes, so good stuff right there. And then we will top it off with a piece of watermelon. And all this food has been frozen, and then I take it out, let it thaw a little bit, and we put it in here so that it gets mushy so they can attack it right away. So next thing I like to do to help get rid of my food scraps and to help feed the worms is add my coffee grounds in here. And this is just spent coffee grounds that we save as we make coffee and into the worm bin it goes. Better than going in the trash or into the sink. And then this right here is just some pulverized grains and cornstarch, that kind of thing from the pantry, all expired. Just again, another way to feed the worms, feed the garden, and get rid of some of the stuff that's expired in the pantry. And then finally, to give the worms some grit for their gizzards, we take our eggshells, just give them a quick rinse, let them dry out, and then we pulverize them in our magic bullet blender. And that is so that the worms can use this grit for the digestion. Now, I had a great comment from one of my vegan viewers, and they asked if there was an alternative to eggshells because they don't really use eggs. And uh, what I let them know is sand or maybe even seashells that you find on the beach, but you can add some sand. You certainly don't need to add as much as I add here. I just add extra because it's gonna go in my garden and feed the garden some calcium. So just a little bit of sand will help with grit. I don't usually recommend sand just because I have such sandy soil here in Florida, but it is an alternative if you don't have access to eggshells or any other kind of animal shells that you don't wanna use. So with that, let's find a way to <laughs> bury up all these food scraps. And then we can add our 200 worms, and yes, we counted them, <laughs> we stopped at 200, so that we can get a good time lapse in and just kind of see how the worms dive down in here. Now, I know it's frozen down there, or it's really cold, but we've got some of this right here, and the worms will know exactly what to do. They will hit the cold and go to the sides, and I'm still here in Florida. We are in the 80s, so everything's going to kind of warm up pretty quickly, so no worry about that but let's go ahead and get that started. So here we go, 200 worms. Let's get them going. One, two, three. I think I see a couple of orange worm butts right there. So they're about as far in as they're gonna go. So let's go ahead and coat this with some more shredded cardboard. I'll put some right there, some on the sides, and then there we go. So what I'll end up doing is I'm gonna add some water to the top of this. Again, this is made out of fabric pots, so it just drains right out and keeps the bin at a perfect moisture. So I absolutely love this outdoor worm bin. So I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you're doing well. I hope your worm bins are doing really well. So happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now. As well as a little piece of pumpkin. Wow.